Okay, so today this came out from the website Digital Spy. Ridley Scott, I suppose, he was recently out promoting his next Alien movie or whatever recent movie he's done lately. His next Alien movie, by the way, is going, to, which is going to be the sequel to Prometheus. In this article, according to the headline, Ridley Scott turned down several superhero films saying think he thinks cinema is in a pretty bad state. Now, this article here is pretty self-explanatory, and it absolutely breaks my heart to even hear one of the all-time greats say pretty much what every everybody knows about Hollywood by now. But then again, this isn't really anything new. Basically, he starts off ba uh, by bashing the superhero genre, and I don't know, maybe it deserves it, maybe it doesn't. I, I still think the whole Marvel experiment is still an interesting one. Even if the only way we were ever going to get at get a Hollywood to go outside of the usual fluff was through a dead pool movie. I mean, it's either that or you get another Zach Galifianakis movie where he's a freaking, a freaking annoying bearded man-child. Still, though, there's going to come a time when the Marvel Universe will be seen as worn out and tired. And when that happens, Hollywood might cease to be. I know a lot of people already think that Hollywood is already a shell of what it used to be. And no, this doesn't have anything to do with the rose-colored glasses of how I see my youth. Everybody knows that some of the greatest movies that we, we've ever come to know came out in the 80s. The 80s were an amazing time for movies. Just an amazing time. But getting back to this article here for a second, here's the part where I absolutely agree with Ridley Scott 100%. He claims in this article that the current state of cinema is pretty bad and that he's concerned for its future prospects. Oh, God, thank God, somebody is actually saying what I've assumed for quite some time. Cinema is in a terrible state right now, and I'm talking about real cinema, real cinema. And if you want an idea for what I consider is real cinema, go watch the video where I talk about the importance of music in films and the absence of great composers to come and replace the likes of Danny Elfman and John Williams. I go into a little bit of depth about the things that I expect in great movies. Great movies. Truly great movies. Now, I would love to make movies myself. You know, smart movies. Smart movies for children, not particularly like uh, Where the Wild Things Are. Although, I do greatly appreciate Spike Jones's attempt at dishing out serious themes uh, toward a more younger audience. And I would love to make these kinds of big budget movies that I would kill my own mother just to see. But it's not gonna happen because my ideas for awesome movies would not be considered profitable, which they likely won't be. Mm -hmm. Lots of risks are taken into account when it comes to producers and executive producers. And these days, more and more than any, Hollywood producers see any amount of risk as more and more of a hazard. And you know what? I get it, though. It's a business. It's important to get the get to get to the bottom dollar. But at this point, the industry is starting to become so worn out, and it's partly because of the internet. Because it is easier to have your voice heard and to create our own means of entertainment independently, albeit on a somewhat tight budget at times. Now, I might take uh, a little issue with one aspect of what Ridley Scott says here in this article, and he alludes to the possibility that Hollywood might adhere to the more the dumb kinds of movies than smart ones and that it will affect those who just want to make smart films. Well, okay, that is possible, but we do still have Christopher Nolan. Now, again, a number of people out there don't think Nolan is all that smart of a director. I think he is, but I do think he might want to go back and take a few more film classes. His style of directing and editing can be a little jarring at times, but I think Nolan kind of tends to make it work at times. And besides, none of his movies were anywhere near as jarring as the movie District 9 or Live Free Di in the uh, die hard. Just to name a few. To Ridley Scott, I would at least say this. If you want to tell a good story without all the ha all of the hassle of dealing with executives who ended up whittling down Prometheus that it became so mediocre in the eyes of true alien fans and we had to see the true vision uh, that Ridley Scott had for Prometheus when the extended versions came out. If you just want to bypass all the insecure whiners who are afraid to, to take actual risks Go to games. Seriously, Alien Isolation wasn't bad, but if we had a Prometheus game, 
written and spearheaded by the, the one and only Ridley Scott. That would have been the greatest thing ever made in recent memory. The single greatest thing ever made. Ever. Instead, all we really have is just mediocre flashbacks of what could have been an unforgettable movie-going experience, but instead, we just got a whole lot of, eh, meh, it could have been better. It could have been better. It could have been better. Yeah. And that's all I really got to say here. Uh, Ridley Scott, I love you, baby. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I totally love you. I totally love you. <laughs> I totally love you. Just, uh, I know, I know it's gonna be great. I know the next Alien movie is gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be fantastic. I couldn't expect anything less. That is, unless executive producers try to friggin' bleh, whittle it down into something like that. To something bleh, sitting bleh. Which, I, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt. <laughs> God damn. Anyway. That's all I have to say, like I said. All I have to say. I'll see you all next time.